But where we saw things that really touched the lives of young people, that really made a difference, it had very little to do with the program. It had everything to do with who delivered the program. You see, we have lost sight about what makes a difference in the lives of our kids. I don't think it's programs, I think it's people. And there's some people in this room that make a difference for kids every day. There's a lot of rhetoric around the fact that it takes a village to raise a child. And I actually believe it does take the village to raise a child. But you know what? No one ever talks about what the village needs to look like. For the first time on one sheet of paper, each of the items are research-based. This is a picture of what the village of Pleasanton needs to look like if you were serious about raising academically successful, contributing young people. Let me just talk about this for a second. When I said connection to school, um, I think some people think of that as, and you talked about teachers, but I want to make sure that we think about all of our staff when we talk about connection to school. We have certificated and classified staff both who make a huge difference in the lives of our kids. We have bus drivers, food service workers. I was in the Saugus School District a few years ago, and we were uh, doing a workshop like this, and we took a break, and they, at the break, they gave an award to a custodian in their district. He is the night custodian in an elementary school. I'm not sure the kids would know him if they saw him on the street. He's usually in the building after hours. But here's what he did. He spray painted a dustpan gold. He calls it the golden dustpan award. <laughs> he leaves it in the classroom each evening that is the cleanest classroom. <laughs> <laughs> Children compete to get the golden dustpan award. <laughs> because he leaves it with cookies. <laughs> The kids in this building call him the cookie monster. They write notes to the cookie monster, and he writes some notes back. And when he got this award, he said, I can't believe you're giving me an award for doing this. He said, I don't work as hard as I used to. Because <laughs> <laughs> the kids are cleaning the class. And he said, and the cookies aren't even any good. They're cheap. <laughs> he said, but they're writing, and I'm writing them back. He said, I think that's good. Mm -hmm. Do you think he's an asset builder? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Caring School Climate isn't just about how uh, staff treat us here, it's about how kids treat one another. And they said, and, and especially at the middle school, kids pick on each other a lot. That's why that number is so low. Again, I wouldn't have thought of that had I not listened to what the kids had to say. A third, 16-year-old young lady, really courageous kid, said it clearer than anybody else. She said, I have three great classes in the morning, and then I have to go to fourth period. She said, I hate to come to school because of fourth period, and I'm not the only one. This guy dumps on us every day, and she said, if you were serious about that, this, you wouldn't let him teach here. Everybody knows who she's talking about. He's standing on the outside with the rest of his peers. He's smart enough to know who's in his fourth period class. This young lady just committed academic suicide in order to make her point. And you can feel the tension in the room going like this, right? And I'm trying to diffuse this as the facilitator of this discussion. So I said to the kids, why do you think some staff do this, build assets for you, while others don't? The kids get it right away. The first kid said, I think the staff that don't, that don't do this, they don't do it because no one ever did it for them as a kid growing up. They don't know how. <laughs> Another kid said, it's hard to fill us up if you're not full. So we came up with a new strategy that morning. Our strategy is feed the staff so they don't eat the kids. <laughs> I'm absolutely serious. If you're an administrator in this room, I believe your job is to build assets for your staff so that they can be there the way they need to be there for the students each day. All the thriving educators dramatically increase as assets increase. Why do I like this model? I think we need efficiency. If we're going to make it as a system, we need efficiency. And here's what, by building assets, you get two things. Lower levels of high-risk behavior higher levels of thriving on the part of children. Okay? Dramatically different. I want to just point out, the best drug education programs in America implemented with fidelity to the original model, research done by the original developers, the best they can show you is six percentage points change over a three year period of time. <coughs> Help me out here for just a second. How many of you can think of somebody who made a difference for you as a kid growing up, someone in school? Raise your hand. Look around this room. Keep it up for just a second. Okay. I think this is an interesting exercise. How long ago were these people in your lives? Long years. The person I'm thinking about was in my life over 40 years ago. It was Mrs. McClellan, my seventh grade social studies teacher, who took me aside one day outside of class, no other kids around, and she said, I've seen your IQ test. She said, you're really bright. 
but you're not working up to your potential. And she said, I'm going to expect more of you than I expect of other students. And I'm going to work with you, but together we're going to go to a higher level this year, you and I. I worked incredibly hard for her that year. Then it occurred to me about two years later, we never took IQ tests. <laughs> and to this day, I'm still wondering how many kids she took outside. <laughs>